All right, today we're going to look at basic trigonometric derivatives. So I'm going to start by giving you two, and then we're going to prove the derivative of one. You'll have to take my word for this. There are elaborate proofs online of the first two, but they are not crucial for you to know at this point in time. So the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine of x. And you can also check these graphically. So if we take the sine curve, which goes to 1, down to negative 1, so on and so forth. The derivative at this point, the slope at 1, or at 0, is 1. The slope at this point here would be 0. Here would be a negative 1. Here would be 0. And you can kind of see that it fits the cosine curve. So you can do a check like that, or you can check it using the definition of a derivative which is much more difficult but I would suggest you just take my word for it at this point and figure it out on your own and the derivative of cos x is going to equal negative sine x which you can probably see by just looking at this point and creating a new curve here so it would just look like that and eventually it'll loop back to itself. So if you take the derivative of negative sine x, you get negative cos x. And if you took the derivative of negative cos x, you'd get back to sine x. So that's a very cool little trick there that you can do. And now I'm going to prove to you that the derivative of tan x is equal to, well, take a guess here. It's not, it's not really something you can guess. This is secant squared of x. And you might be thinking, whoa, where did that come from? Well, I am going to show you. All right, let's take a look. Tan x is the same thing as sine x over cos x. So we're going to take the derivative of this using the quotient rule. So this is f prime of x. So cos x times cos x minus uh, f of x, which is sine of x, times the derivative of cos of x, which is negative sine x. So this will be cos x cos x plus sine x sine x all over the bottom squared. So this is cos squared x, which is the same thing as cos squared x plus sine squared x over cos squared x, which is the same thing as 1 over cos x squared by our identity that cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. And we know that 1 over cos squared cosine squared x is the same thing as secant squared x. So here we have just proven that the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. What you can do now if you want is you can solve and find the derivatives of cosecant x. You can find the derivative of secant x and you can find the derivative of cotangent of x using these methods as well. I'm going to skip all those methods because I don't want to solve them all. But you should for yourself as practice of the quotient and product rule. But I will give you what they are here. The derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x tan, uh, cot x cotangent x. The derivative of secant x is secant x tan x. And the derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. So you might notice a close relationship here between cosecant x and secant x. It's basically just changing these around to their counterparts and adding a negative sign. That's how I remember them anyway. There might be an easier way to remember them, but I just remember loose connections like that. And normally you don't really run into cosecant x or cotangent x derivatives or integrals much in calculus you're more likely to run into tangent, secant, sines, and cosines. So those are definitely the most important ones to remember. So let's do some example problems with these. Okay, so we're giving y is equal to 3x squared minus 2 times cosine x. Okay, y prime is equal to the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x, minus 2 times the derivative of cosine x, which the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So 
we put a sine x, we're going to take the negative and put it out front, so it's 6x plus 2 sine x. You can factor, but what's the point, people? There's no point. Alright. Uh, so yeah, here we go. I'm going to give you guys another look at our derivatives here. Cosecant x, secant x. In fact, for the practice problems, you are going to need... I'll actually rewrite them here. Why, uh, the derivative of sine x is equal to cos x, and the derivative of secant x is secant x tan x for the practice problems. So here we go. y is equal to sine of x squared. Here we're going to use the chain rule. And for the second practice question, you have y is equal to secant theta over secant theta plus 1. This one's a little bit more tricky. I'm going to do a trick as soon as I get to it. But uh, pause the video, see if you can figure out the problems, and I'll be back in a second. All right, hopefully you're able to solve at least the first problem. So with the chain rule, you know the derivative of sine of x squared is, well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So we have cosine x squared multiplied by the inside function, which is the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So this is 2x cos x squared. I could rewrite it the other way. It doesn't necessarily matter. This one, second one, secant theta over secant theta plus 1. I am going to do something tricky here. What I'm going to do is I am going to add one and subtract one. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to isolate this out. So I get y is equal to 1. And then I'm going to subtract 1 over secant theta plus 1. I could do the other way, I just don't want to deal with too many secant thetas because its derivative isn't necessarily the most fun thing to work with, so I just simplify this a little bit. This is more of a trick that really helps with integrals, not so much with derivatives. So here we go, quotient rule time. y prime is equal to, well this term goes to zero, so this will be negative. Okay, f prime of x times g of x is 0 minus the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tan theta, and the derivative of 1 is 0, okay, and this is all over secant theta plus 1 all squared. So we don't even need to simplify this really. We just know that this is the same thing as secant theta tan theta over secant theta plus one all squared. So again, these basic trig problems are really not that difficult. It's just memorizing in this case, maybe four different integrals, proving them to yourself that they're true and applying the chain rule, product rule, and quotient rule. Those are really the big things. These are kind of like just little facts you have, and the product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule are your tools that you're using to derive. So really sine x and cos x are the only two you need to know. The rest you can derive, and then you have your building blocks to solve problems. So next video we're going to do some derivative practice problems from exams and a couple different textbooks, so you'll get some more practice then.